Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Thaddeus P. Olsen. We'll be discussing his wonderful book, Java Hill, An African Journey, A Nation's Evolution Through Ten Generations of a Family Linking Four Continents. Available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com and people, listen, Thad was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best publishers in the business, Diamond Media Press Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, well, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give and you contact Diamond Media. You can find out more information on their fantastic company at diamondmediapressco.com. And people, listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Thad here on the line with us. Now, the moment you go to his Amazon page, you go to his Barnes & Noble page, you start to do any research on his book, Java Hill, you're instantly going to have an idea of what we're discussing today. Now, it's a historical memoir, okay? It's going to cover his family's journey over four generations, okay? Sit back, strap in, have your notebooks ready because, listen, there's going to be a fantastic education you're going to receive today. And all of the specific nuances that you're going to encounter when you pick up his book, we're going to cover some of them within this short interview. But you're going to want to head on over to Amazon, Barnes & Noble and pick up copies for yourself because you surely will not be disappointed. And who better to be here to talk to us about his family's journey than Thad himself. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Thad, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you so much for being a guest. How are you, man? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Absolutely. Listen, the pleasure is ours. Okay, we're absolutely looking forward to this, so thank you for being a guest with us today. And Thad, I know we have a lot of information to cover, specifically with your family's background, but before we go there, tell our listening audience about yours. Give us a little more background information on yourself, please. Okay, well, I'm, I know we're talking about a, a historical novel that I've written, but in real life, I'm a physician, and I'm a professor at a, at a medical school, and oh, that's wow. what I do most of the time. But I've always been a student of history, and uh, that's sort of what inspired me to, to write this book. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, Thad, I wasn't initially planning on going here, but after that answer, how could I go anywhere else? You said <laughs> your main career, you're a physician and you're a professor. That's right. I, listen, man, how does one branch from being a, f a physician to now being a creative writer? And I know this one's historical, but still, it, where does that link happen? I, I mean, talk to us. Were you always a fan of writing growing up? Were, uh, there were, were there particular artists or other writers that inspired you? Talk to us a little bit more about that inspiration. Yeah, I think I've, you know, I, I've always been interested in literature, um, even when I was in high school, even though I was a sort of a science major, I always uh, sort of was, you know, reading uh, different historical books or mm -hmm. uh, plays or, I mean, I, I think that I was one of those people who could have, uh, I think at one point I was actually thinking maybe I should go to law school instead of medical school, but eventually <laughs> this is what won out. <laughs> so this is where I am. But but I've always been interested in stories. Fantastic. Well, listen, whether you went to law school or medical school, I'm sure your parents would have been equally as proud with either <laughs> one of those paths that, that you selected. That's fantastic, man. Congratulations on that. And sticking with the concept of inspiration, but now honing closer to your book. What I love about what you did here, Thad, is, listen, we know people, let's call a spade a spade. Not everybody gets to get written about in the history books, right? But just because right. your story isn't deemed worthy to get taught in an educational level doesn't mean your story isn't worth being told. And I love the fact that you took the initiative and comprised this of your, your comprised this memoir of your family's history that now I'm curious because this very easily could have been something that you orchestrated and set up and, you know, just kept on your personal shelf. 
and passed around to family members and you know maybe made copies that way but you didn't stop there that you went you put the book together and you published it now for the public to partake in as well what inspired you to do that what did you see about the words you were putting on the page that made you feel they would be beneficial to whoever picked them up okay so a bit of uh maybe a bit of a context uh, two things one is you know, so I am an African. I was born in Ghana, West Africa. I'm <clears throat> my last name is Olsen, which is actually a Dutch or a German name. So you immediately mm -hmm. sort of as you're growing up wondering, how come I have this name, which right. is not very common around here. And you kind of ask around and it looks like everybody you say says, yeah, well, the one before me had the same name. So the name keeps going back. And then you begin to wonder, OK, you to find out where name came from admittedly it's not the only sort of european name where i grew up but it was not a very common one mm -hmm. so that kind of got me going i used to sort of ask my father about it he seemed to know some things about it but not a lot and so later on after he passed away i kind of felt like well this is something i probably should get a bit more interested in so the place I come from, Elmina, uh, in Ghana, West Africa, was the capital of the Dutch, I guess, colonial experiment in the 17 and 1800s. Okay, so that, that's kind of the background. It was the first place where a large European, well, it's called a castle now, Elmina Castle, was built by the Portuguese in about 1482. So it's a very historic place. It's in Africa, but it has a lot of European history coming and going. And so that's the kind of context I grew up in. And that's kind of what sparked my curiosity to sort of pursue this. There you have it. Yeah. Bad, without further ado, let's jump right in, man. Java Hill, an African okay. journey. Tell us a little bit more about your narrative. So, I mean, essentially, um, I've been sort of thinking about this for a while. And then one day I got a, an email from a Dutch historian who said, you know what? Um, I got your name from some folks. I'm looking into the history of African soldiers who went to Indonesia in the 1800s. And Olden was one of the names. So this is, this person called me and I said, fine. She came down from the Netherlands. Uh, we looked at the data and interestingly enough, we found what would have been my great grandfather. He enlisted fight in the Royal Dutch East Indies Army when he was a young man in the early 1800s and served in Indonesia and then came back. So this got me really interested. And so I started wondering what inspired him to do what he did at that age. And I started researching, started looking for documents. I traveled to The Hague, started looking at the military documents, trying to find out more and more. And uh, the story just kind of unfolded. You know how you start something and then it, it takes on a life of its own. Yeah, absolutely. And before I knew it, I, I, had, gone, I had gone back 10 generations. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm really curious that talk to me about the title of the book. Now, An African Journey, straightforward. A nation's evolution yes, through 10 generations of a family linking four continents. I mean, there's a lot there, but also pretty straightforward. Right. Java Hill, I'm really curious about that. Talk very to us. Good, very good question. Yeah, please very talk to us question. a little bit more about that. That Right. So Java Hill is actually a place. Um Elmina, the town I come from, is set on three hills and there's a river that runs through it. And Java Hill is one of the three hills. The other hill is St. Joseph's Hill, which is the oldest Catholic church in Ghana. And the third hill is a hill called San Jago Hill, which has a little fort that was built on the hill to defend the castle that was sitting on the coast. So that's the setting. And Java Hill is the place where people like my great grandfather, who had served in the Dutch army, when they returned, were given a piece of land in their retirement to build their homes. And so that place called Java Hill, because the people who lived there had gone to Java and sold it and come back. Mm -hmm. And that's 
So that that was the name I gave the book because the story was partly about them. Fantastic. That's yeah. remarkable. That's remarkable. Guys, again, here on the line with Thaddeus P. Olsen. We're discussing his fantastic book, Java Hill, An African Journey, A Nation's Evolution Through Ten Generations of a Family Linking Four Continents, available for purchase through Amazon as well as BarnesandNoble.com. You know, that next question as we continue on here, and, and thank you very much for all the information you've relayed so far. You know, mm -hmm. while you were doing your research and you were coming across this timeline of your family's history, was there maybe a couple of things that stood out to you that you can share with us right now? Sure. I mean, um, basically what I experienced was, you know, trying to live in the different times people I found lived. Right, mm -hmm. because I started out. I had told you about the origin of the name, and so I found out that um, a Dutch corporal called Jan Olsen was posted to Elmina in 1732. So he's the original Olsen who came to Africa. He came with his 10-year-old son because he was a widower, which was interesting in itself. And well, sadly. Soon after he got to Africa, he got malaria and he died. Oh, no. And his son, who was 10, was left with the Dutch East Indies Company. Mm -hmm. So the company raised him. And this young man so was a white boy growing up as an African because he couldn't go back to the Netherlands. Right. So it was this sort of human story. And so I started following the journey um, of the family. And... He joined the company, and this company um, was actually a slave trading company. So this was during the slave trade. Wow. And he rose to become wow. chief merchant of the slave trading company from being an orphan. And um, the story kind of continues. They go to Suriname. His, and then, uh, just to give you a bit of irony, uh, his, he retires. When you retire, what do people do? They go home, right? So he's going back to the Netherlands where he's never lived before. He's lived in Africa since he was 10. And he's going with his 10-year-old son at the time. And on the way from Suriname to the Netherlands, he gets sick and he dies. On oh, my goodness. And, <laughs> and his 10-year-old son now is a black boy arriving in Europe. That's his father. So that's... This is sort of really, you can't make this stuff up. It's actually quite interesting. And um, and so I, I just sort of started following um, each generation and, and what, you know. So for, for his generation, the big issue was the slave trade. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he comes back to Africa. And then it's the end of the slave trade. And then it's the colonial era. And... Uh, the British takeover from the Dutch, because in those days, if you ruled the sea, right, you were the most powerful country in the world. Mm -hmm. So ne the Dutch had the most powerful navy in the 1700s. By the 1800s, it was the British. So they took over. And um, I sort of got a window into each era of my country's uh, history through the eyes of these people and how they lived. And that's, that's essentially the story. All the way till my generation. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. Guys, listen, this is something taken directly out of a Hollywood film. And we've covered one <laughs> generation. <laughs> the book is filled with 10. Okay. That's just one. That is absolutely incredible, Thad. I love it. Listen, man, who would you say is your intended audience? And what are you hoping to see them do or take from this book? I think there are a number of audiences, if I may be permitted a few. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think the first audience was really my children, wanting to help them understand who they were and what their history was. Yeah. So that that's yeah. kind of where it started. Um, but my real audience is anybody who is interested in world history, you know, the history of us as a people on the planet, because it just gives you an idea of. If, if you met me on the street, yeah, you'd meet me, I'm this African guy. But if you really knew my story, you'd know that my story began in a little town in the Netherlands called Brilly, 
1732, you'd never make that connection. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's, that, that's what I like about it, is that, you know, people are not who you think they are in many ways. And it's great to listen to people and have them tell you their story. So I hope that this book will sort of inspire other people, sort of look back and find out who they were 200 years ago. They might be surprised. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Thad, last couple of questions here as, as we close out of this fantastic interview. So we know about the book. We know about your background. I want to know about the future. What's next for you? What's on the horizon? Are there more books that you're in the, the, the process of writing? Tell us what you have upcoming. Uh, yes. The, uh, the answer is yes. I do have a second uh, novel, also historical, that I'm working on. But that, because I have to be fair, this is on my father's side of the family. So, you know, I got to do what on my mother's side of the family as well. <laughs> Which is an interesting story that is more set in the old Ashanti Empire of West Africa. So it's a different story, mm -hmm. but it's also a very interesting story. And um, it, it starts with really my great grandmother, who I met as a child until she died when I was about eight. And, and asking about her inspired a different journey, which I'm different writing journey that I'm on right now. <laughs> That's right. Fantastic. And listen, last question here at that, as I said to you on the pre-screening call, I'm an artist myself, different medium, but I love right. having this platform to, to be able to pay it forward, you know, in a sense to other artists out there listening in. And in this instance, other writers out there listening in. Well, Thad, you are someone that has been through the process. You've written your book, but it didn't end there. You've also gone through the gauntlet of getting the book published. And anybody that's been in right. that world and been through that process understands writing the book is only half the battle. I'd love that to take so this true. opportunity, Thad, for any writers out there listening in, any new writer, someone just starting out, what words of wisdom could you relate to them? I mean, the truth is that it comes and goes. Your inspiration comes, you write a bit, but mm -hmm. life takes over and sometimes you leave the manuscript for a while. But don't worry about that because something else will get you back to it. It takes a while to put a book together. And I think people should not be discouraged. If they have the impulse to write, they should follow it. And it takes as long as it takes, but it eventually does get done. And, and it's a beautiful thing after that. Fantastic. You That's know, right. Thad, I, I love what you said there because it's so real. It's so raw. Uh, listen, guys, you may have such an immense amount of inspiration one day to write a book the next day you wake up and it's not it's not quite there that's normal exactly that's understandable yeah. right it's part of the game and i love what that is saying because a lot of times we don't really focus on that we don't showcase the fact that hey guys listen it's okay to hit bumps along the way it's okay to be uninspired in moments that inspiration will come back you just got to stick with it. Keep your head down. Keep it moving. And the inspiration will slowly start to creep back in. Find your niche. I love it. I absolutely love it, guys. And you know what I love even more? Is we're at the end of the interview now. We have discussed so much information with that. And somehow we've barely scratched the surface. <laughs> I mean, so as I said, we talked about one particular generation. The book is filled with 10 of them. And that's just this one. All right, this is the father's side. That is working on the mother's side right now. So I'm, but this is what I need you all to do. Okay. Head on over to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, pick up your copy, Java Hill, an African journey, a nation's evolution through 10 generations of a family linking four continents by Thaddeus P. Olson. You surely will not be disappointed. Pick up your copies today. Let's grow. Let's develop. Let's educate ourselves. And it starts with this fantastic narrative. That this has been an absolute pleasure, man. Such an honor. I truly mean that. Thank you once again for being a guest with us on People of Distinction. You're most welcome, and I'm uh, happy for the opportunity. Thank you for the conversation.